Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History, the series where I talk about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh! throughout the years, and some of the other ones that didn't. Also going on today, possibly the sound of the lawnmower going on in the background. However, unfortunately for you and I both, I only have so much time to film this before work. So to make up for it, if it is in fact audible in the recording, I will of course kill my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> but not actually. Anyway, today's card, a card so ahead of its time, it's still worth being banned even as of today. It's number 16, Shockmaster. Shockmaster was first released in the TCG in the 2012 collectible tins, Wave 2, as a super rare in the undisputed greatest tin promos ever in this game's history, the Hanzo tin. To date, it has received no other reprints and was banned a little under a year later in the September 2013 ban list, where as I make this video, the card has been ever since. A light attribute fairy type rank 4 exceeds monster with 2300 attack and 1600 defense. The materials to make it are any three level 4 monsters, and its effect reads. Once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card to declare one card type, monster, spell, or trap. That type of card, if spell or trap, cannot be activated, or if monster, cannot activate its effects until the end of your opponent's next turn. Unlock the shock, baby. The best rallying cry to unban a card because it's just so goddamned catchy. It is so, you know, is in complete ignorance to the fact that Shockmaster is a horrifically degenerate card and that this card should in fact stay dead and banned, but that's okay because Unlock the Shock rhymes. When Shockmaster hit the game, it was only a month after the first big hits to the meta at its time. The four powerhouse decks of the format, Insector, Dino Rabbit, Chaos Dragon, and Windup, were finally hit in some manner on the ban list, and as such, there was a bit of room for growth in the format. And by growth, I of course mean more of the same, but I guess a little bit less, because despite the hits to the decks, they weren't dead by any means. Two copies of Rescue Rabbit meant Dino Rabbit was still playable. You could still search Hornet or Dragonfly in Insector thanks to Centipede, and as such, that deck was still playable. BLS is still a card, yep, Chaos Dragons is still playable for that reason alone, and the Party Boat was still legal in Windup, so Windup was in fact still playable. And Windup is where we start the look at Shockmaster, because the Party Boat Zen Mighty and Windup Magician being able to fetch monsters from the deck made it incredibly easy to spam out whatever Xyz monster you wanted of rank 3, 4, or 5. And what do you know, Shockmaster is a 4. The deck had an infamous two card combo in fact of Wind Up Magician and Wind Up Shark, which if you opened the two cards and went uninterrupted, Shockmaster was a guaranteed summon each and every time if you so wanted it to be. By normal summoning Wind Up Magician, you can activate Wind Up Shark's effect in hand to summon itself, which of course will trigger Magician's effect to summon a second copy of Magician from your deck. You can then use Shark's on field effect to make itself become level 3, which will summon another copy of Rat thanks to the second Wind Up Magician you summoned off the first one. Then you overlay your two Magicians to summon Photon Palp Operative, and then use its effect to detach a Magician and shift the Rat into attack position, which will allow you to revive a Magician in your graveyard by switching the Rat to defense. You can then overlay Rat and Shark for Zen Mighty, and use Zen Mighty's effect to detach and summon a level 4 Wind Up from your deck which will trigger another copy of Magician that you revived since what are actual hard ones per turns, and you can revive a third level 4 from your deck, allowing you to overlay for Shockmaster. Effect Call Monster, or Spell depending on exactly what deck it is you're facing, and laugh as you have achieved peak Yu-Gi-Oh in the year of 2012 by stopping your opponent from playing the game. This was the second stage of wind-up in the meta, broadly speaking, moving on from going a hand-looping strategy to shutting down plays entirely. It's a very fondly remembered deck by people who played against it, I'm sure. This was the best home for Shockmaster until the March 2013 ban list, which banned the party boat and killed this combo. But it's not like that was the end for Shockmaster, because while 3 level 4s wasn't exactly the easiest thing to get out in 2012 and in 2013, it was still very much doable. And more than that, since extra decks in general had a little bit more wiggle room, it wasn't really uncommon to tech Shockmaster in, because if you happened to end up with 3 level 4s, then why not shut down the opponent from playing for being so audacious as to let you have three level fours. 
Decks like Gadgets had already received a boost from the release of Xyz monsters in general, giving players advantage turn after turn with the Gadget summons, and if you could normal summon one and then revive another from the grave, say with a copy of Call of the Haunted, you could not only get a rank 4 play, but two more monsters in hand to keep doing so on the following turn. Where Gadget would shine in 2012 would of course be with Ultimate Offering, which gave the deck unlimited normal summons for the cost of 500 each, which technically means only 17 normal summons in one turn before you kill yourself, but functionally, that's unlimited. There aren't 17 gadgets anyways. <laughs> this made it incredibly easy to get out any generic rank 4 of your choice, including, of course, Shockmaster. Now, this did require you to skill open Ultimate Offering, which was limited at the time, and you would be waiting until turn 3, assuming you went first to be able to do so, but... If they happened to pull that off, that shit felt unbeatable. Or it did to me, and I'm retconning it by saying that everyone in the world agreed with me, and there's no disputing that because there just there's no way to know what happened in 2013. It's, it's all a mystery. Nope, nobody has a fucking clue. <laughs> You also saw Shockmaster popping up in decks like Dino Fist, a mutt deck of sorts playing the best parts of Fire Fist and Dino Rabbit to exclusively make rank 4s, which could of course tech in Shockmaster for the instances where they had enough monsters to make it. It wasn't even particularly hard to do. If you could normal summon a Fire Fist monster, you could use some traps to keep it alive on the opponent's turn, and if you have the bunny, one bunny equals two level 4s, and with your third, look at that, Shockmaster. Hell, you could even get greedy and attack with the three monsters first before making Shockmaster in main phase two. I mean, what's the worst that could happen if you attack with three monsters? You run into a battle disruption of some type? What, are you scared of mirror force? You fucking coward? You, you're gonna make dumb, stupid, reserved, conservative style plays when you could liberally attack with reckless abandon? What are you fucking stupid? There's no need to summon Shockmaster and call track. Just go for it. Go for the kill. I promise you, you'll always do well, and I'm not at all being a liar. Really, any deck with level 4s, of course, and a spare slot in the extra could throw this deck in. So you find things like six samurai decks teching in Shockmaster because Kizan is a free rank 4 because when you factor in the fact that Gateway existed in 2012 and it was 2012 and it was fucking Gateway, it was unlimited 4s provided you can detach them and you can in fact detach Shockmaster's material to keep making Kizans into infinite level 4s and rank 4s. So uh, that did happen from time to time. There was, of course, Hunter as a deck that would play it, because all that deck fucking does is normal summon fours 12 times. And if you happen to use the Seahorse effect to lock you out of special summoning first, that's a little yucky. But if you didn't, just make Shockmaster and lock the opponent out of playing instead. Or how about a Medulce deck list? Because look, I've got one. I found it. I'm a Dolce deck topped, playing Shock, I know, crazy. Tiara Masu can win the deck by itself, and uh, if you want to win the duel instead of just the deck, that would, totally wasn't a misspeak, you of course can summon out Shockmaster using your spammed out Mesangelados. Uh, or that's something like that, I don't know. Constellar played this thing, okay? We can even throw in a goddamn gadget deck list, because look, Tin Goldfish came about, which meant you didn't have to rely on Call of the Haunted, you could just goldfish and then gadget and get the get the searches going that way and just just let it roll from there okay uh, the last spot that I, I can talk about for Shockmaster in regards to the actual meta and not just the existence of decks that can play it would of course come in one of the most infamous eras in this game's history, the Dragon Ruler format. And that was pretty much a tier zero, but not really because there was another deck known as Spellbook, but it was uh, tier zero enough, okay? And look, there's a spellbook deck list that topped playing Shockmaster. I don't know that it ever made it even once, but look, it's got Kaiku, K Kiko, that guy. It's got the four, it's got a level four, and there's three of them, exactly. So if all three of them end up on the field, just fucking make Shockmaster call monster, and the Dragon Ruler cannot play at all. You'd also have to have lived for three turns at that point to summon the three of them, but just shut up, okay? Just fucking do it, okay? Truthfully, most spellbooks didn't play Shockmaster to my memory, and if they did, they did not make it. Uh, it was more so there because it's not like the deck was hurting for extra deck space. The ideal play was, of course, to use Judgment and then summon out Jaugen and set a bunch of spell and trap to protect it so that you could win with that Floodgate instead of the Shockmaster Floodgate. Or have Shockmaster summoned on you playing spellbooks and cry because they called spells and you lost. <laughs> that, was, that was another thing. The duality of Yu-Gi-Oh! or something to that effect. As for what deck might actually summon Shockmaster in the Dragon Ruler meta, it would probably be Evil Swarm. 
that was the last big deck to play it that I can find, which makes enough sense when you consider that it's the only rank 4 deck that was viable at the time. The main game plan for Evil Swarm was to simply make Ophion, a rank 4 that had 2550 attack, and while it has a material, the opponent can't special summon level 5 or higher monsters, and it of course could detach a material to search their archetypal Forbidden Lance, which, uh, what kept Ophion safe from spell and trap. So you just sat on Ophion, Ophion set four pass, win every time, the rulers can do nothing. Just hope they didn't open Blaster and another fire. Now, again, this was a deck that didn't make it super consistently, but the game plan was to shut down the opponent, and if you happen to be able to make Shockmaster, you could really lock down both of the two best decks. Calling spells for spell books was brutal, calling monsters for dragon rulers was brutal. You effectively won right then and there. So, of course, it was teched in and played. Now, like I said, if you could play fours, you played this shit. I personally remember playing a heroic deck at the time and thinking it was so good because it could make Shockmaster with extra sword as a material, which would boost it to 3300 attack, which meant my Shockmaster was stronger and therefore better. And that alone was the reason it got banned. Not at all for being one of the most toxic cards in existence at the time, it was because of my dumbass heroic deck list that was played exclusively with five of my friends in my buddy's basement. Facts only on this channel. <laughs> yes, it was the infamous September 2013 ban list, which is one that not only splintered the game into two formats, giving us the OCG and TCG as different lists, but making actual differences on that list day one by banning Shockmaster. Because the TCG banned it, the OCG did not. The OCG actually had Shockmaster until January of 2016, which is fucking insane to me, but what do I know? Uh, Pepe got to have Shockmaster, which is an insane thing. Pepe was bad enough in the TC, I can't imagine how the fuck the OCG dealt with that. Uh, it was only in the game for 11 months in the TCG, released in October of 2012 and banned in September of the next year, and in that time plenty of people learned to hate this thing because it doesn't let you fucking play. Not really much else needs to be said, does there? You activate it after you've made your own plays, shut down the opponents from making any, and when it comes back to your turn, you can make all the plays again and then wait to have Shockmaster be the last thing you do again. It's the worst kind of non-gameplay imaginable, and I believe that it will never come off the list, certainly without an errata that would destroy it, much like the errata destroyed Crush Card Virus, because ripped to Crush Card Virus, that card was never the same. And yes, it is of course susceptible to negation. Effect Veiler existed, Skill Drain existed, Breakthrough Skill, Fiendish Chain were all cards in 2012, if I'm remembering correctly, that could stop it in the TCG when it was legal. And nowadays you can even add things like Imperm or Moonlit Chill or maybe a Nibiru to stop it, assuming they can't make it with the three fours and shock first thing. But if you don't have those and it resolves, you effectively lose a turn and likely the duel, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! since you can have it three fucking turns in a row. If you're playing an all monster deck and they call monster three turns in a row, what are you doing? Now, it's worth noting, of course, that this doesn't technically stop everything every time. If it calls spell and trap, it says that the type of card can't be activated, but nothing about the effects of those cards in specific regard to spell and trap. That is to say, if you have an effect in the graveyard to banish a spell or trap and get an effect, you can't activate it because you are not activating the card, you are activating the effect. Activating the card of spell or trap requires it to be on the field, you know, place it on the field, activate it from set on the field, activate to make card, not effect. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. But for monsters, you are completely fucked. It's as bad as it gets. You can't activate effects. Uh, this was relevant in the Dragon Ruler meta, since the Dragon Rulers all have effects to summon themselves uh, by banishing cards from the hand or grave, or effects when they're banished, or effects when they're discarded with an appropriate attribute. Uh, this doesn't stop summoning conditions, mind you. The Dragon Rulers have an effect to summon themselves, whereas something like Cyber Dragon or Dark Armed Dragon has a summoning condition. The opponent having a card, having three darks in your grave. If that's the case and it is a summoning condition, then you can still summon the monster, you just can't use Dark Armed Dragon's effect, for example. Uh, shoutouts, of course, going to Cyber Dragon for being an effect monster that doesn't actually have an effect. Just a neat fun fact for you, I guess. 
If you want to see how good this card can be, though, broadly speaking, like if you're skeptical for whatever reason of a card that's fucking shut down Dex dot card, I, I highly recommend checking out Lithium 2300's 2020 Cross Band List Cup because Lithium used the Pepe version from the OCG in that one, and you can see it play against decks like Dragoon Turbo and Pendulum with Metal Foes and the 2018 shenanigans with Astrograph and Fusion Substitute Zoo and plenty of other damn good high tier decks and you can see just what Shockmaster does in those matchups. It absolutely can still win against modern decks by itself because again, it doesn't let you play. Gotta play to win. It's basically a more versatile but slower version of True King of All Calamities and it's not a quick effect, so, you know, it's more fair, he said facetiously. Overall, Shockmaster is just a stupidly, stupidly strong card. It is yet another card I've covered that is a win condition by itself, and it honestly only got better with time in the sense that decks became more and more monster-focused over the years, and this card's ability to shut down monsters only got better. Like, it's banned, but, like, if it weren't, it would only have been getting better. It's the epitome of draw the out in terms of gameplay, and that's simply not cool. At least in 2013, you were probably playing traps. Like you could get hit for no spells or monsters, set your compulse, and then in the opponent's draw phase, compulse that shit off the field and hope to survive. That is not the case today. Uh, this is Boomer VFD, which is my way of saying once again that it's VFD and that shit fucking sucks. I do not see it coming back, like I said, unless it's got some, you know, card-killing errata. And I know it, that these days, for two things, okay, I know it for two things. The first is, of course, the amazingly catchy Unlock the Shock, which is such a great meme that I have to respect it, even though I hate this card. And also because every time I remember this card, I remember the Hanzo tin. And I'm sent into shock because that tin was so fucking good in 2012, dude. You don't even know. You had to be there. And so that's our look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History number 16, Shockmaster. Stay tuned for our next video, and then feel free to suggest some cards you'd like to see reviewed or what type of video you'd like to see. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to YGO Strats. Not only will you be impressive, your smoking Italian wife, but you'll immediately become a true duelist. And what could possibly be better than that? Knowing why I put two Laval Balls in one shot. I only have one. That's it. Fucking <laughs> the deal. It's a band exceeds. Fuck it. Close enough.